Hello and welcome to Power Drift. As you know, we've been doing a series on riding gear where we take a complicated idea like a motorcycle jacket, for example, and break it down into something simpler. Something that has clear pointers for what you should be doing and how to make a decision for your next one. Today we're talking about something that's even closer to your skin. We're talking about what you wear inside. Now it can be a ticklish topic because most people don't realize that the pain that you get on the motorcycle two hours into your ride is usually not the seat. It's not the motorcycle. It's not even the way you're sitting. It's the underwear you're wearing. And the first thing I would tell somebody who's getting serious about touring is look at your underwear and you probably want to throw it away. And it's not a matter of the how old it is, how bad the elastic's gotten or how many stains are on it. It's a matter of the fact that if this is your butt cheek that's sitting on the seat, what you want is nothing between the two if possible. But most normal underwear will put a seam in the middle of that and it's that seam that slowly digs and digs and digs and eventually makes you super super uncomfortable. Get rid of the seam, not the underwear, and you'll be much better off. And today we're going to talk about how do you do that and let's start with your upper body. Most Indian riders I've met will use a cotton t-shirt, usually their favorite one and let's say something clever on the front of it. Uh, like the t-shirt that I've always wanted to make, 100 kmph, this is an idea for you, is it says TRD on the front and on the back it says Turende. Now, the problem is not what it says on the t-shirt, it's the fact that it's made of cotton. Cotton is really good at absorbing your sweat, but it's really terrible at drying out. And what that means is, on your ride, as you start to sweat, the cotton just gets heavier and heavier and heavier. The water that's already absorbed blocks its ability to let ventilation through and eventually it's just a sticky hot mess. It's the reason why if you start looking at what the hikers, the trekkers, the guys for whom temperature control is really, really crucial, you'll find that they wear very, very little cotton indeed. They all prefer to wear more or less technical synthetic materials. Materials that are well known for what is called the wicking property uh, and stuff like polypropylene works really well. There are some natural materials like merino. Merino actually works not just in the cold, it actually works quite well up to a reasonably hot temperature like 28, 29 degrees. But the idea is all of these materials have wicking properties and what that means is if this is your skin and a bead of sweat appears a wicking material will immediately absorb that sweat and it'll spread it out over a large area so that it can evaporate really quickly rather than stay sticky for a long time the evaporation also reopens the fabric for ventilation which means if there's wind falling on that part of your skin it can get through the material and get to your skin and make you feel cooler now i prefer to use uh, airism it's a material brand uh, from uniqlo but nike's dry fits and all of them are similar some of them are thicker some of them are thinner you need to figure out your comfort level this one in fact is so thin that i know that a single layer of this which i'm holding up you can actually see my head right through it it's that kind of thing they also make a mesh version of this which is even thinner which is also really nice to use the idea of wearing a technical material like this as a base layer does two or three things first these materials pack down really small so in terms of consuming space in your luggage these are much smaller than cotton t-shirts second they can be washed overnight and they dry really fast so if you were to dry this in the night say at nine o'clock by one o'clock in the morning they'd be bone dry again third for the lazy bums amongst you these kind of materials and merino, they tend not to stink too much. So you can actually get away with having this sweat, you're leaving it out to dry, wearing it the next morning and continuing your ride. And you can get up to three, four, five days of riding before they really stink up. But the most important thing is when you're on the motorcycle, the ventilation feels good on your skin. And when you sweat, it dries out so you don't get sticky over time. There is a word of warning though, they are so effective at evaporation that if you do get caught in the rain and you're wearing mesh, you're going to get very, very cold indeed and you need to take precautions. I'm not kidding, it gets really cold. So there are two things that you can do, well three you can do. One, carry a rain layer if it's like May or June and there might be a shower along the way. Two, if you see rain coming, you're only wearing the base layer and a mesh jacket, stop, take a break, let the rain get out it's not worth getting that kind of cold or three if you really get that kind of cold stop somewhere find something like a newspaper or something that can actually block at least the wind from getting to the base layer and you'll feel a lot warmer even if the newspaper gets wet when it comes to what's happening below the waist the story remains the same what you want is underwear that has ideally this material so a lot of the running leggings from brands like Kalenji at uh, Decathlon etc work really well what I prefer to use still is a Uniqlo runner's tight and the idea is that your butt cheek area should have no seams in it at all and when you put it on you should verify that there are no creases at all either it's the creases and the seams that are going to cause problems if you can eliminate that 
big score. And what I've also discovered over time is that base layers also allow you to operate on a much larger temperature range without getting uncomfortable. So that means that let's say that you are normally comfortable between 25, let's say 27 degrees on the top and say about 14 degrees at the bottom. This is your normal operating temperature range. A base layer, a simple summer base layer like this will easily add 5 degrees or more to each side of this, which means you'll be able to handle it if it gets much colder than that. And you'll also be able to handle if it gets much hotter than that, which is a surprise for me too but it works really well when it gets below that of course you can switch to other things like cold weather base layers which are much thicker which also have warmth properties but also do all the wicking and evaporation and all of that work as well when it gets hotter than that and the base layer alone isn't going to be worth it then you need to find other solutions and i will leave you with just a small idea about these solutions because summer is coming this part where the blood is very close to your skin on both your wrists and this part behind your neck where again the blood is very close to your skin are very effective areas if you can just cool these three you'll feel a lot better. And how do you cool? Uh, you can just have something wet next to it, like a handkerchief or something. But remember, cotton dries slowly and the evaporative properties aren't very good. So what you want is something designed for it. There is a brand called Hypercool, which actually makes a material which is, does exactly this. It absorbs water and it releases it in evaporation very slowly over a long period of time. I found a Triumph branded Hypercool item in the Triumph shop, which is like a really skinny scarf that you wet and put around your neck that works really well. There are other brands. Hypercool is one of them that make vests that go under your jacket. Remember, many of them will block your ventilation. So when the material dries out, you need to refresh. That means you need to re-wet that jacket. The other material that we came across at the Desert Storm last year was a brand called Inutech. I bought a vest from them. They're really expensive. I think my vest was about 8,000 rupees. So it's not a cheap investment, but on the other side, it does work really well. But to regulate temperature, to be comfortable on the motorcycle over long distances and to not be sticky over days and days and days and save on luggage space, get base layers. This is a series on riding gear on power drift. Thank you so much for watching. There's more content coming. We've talked about a lot of topics and there's a lot more to come. Stay tuned.